Hey, I'm Michael, and in this Cricut tutorial, I am showing you how to cut wood with your Cricut Explore Air 2 or Cricut Explore 3. So let's get crafty. All right, so to make this happen, we will need a few different items, including a cutting machine. I am using a Cricut Explore Air 2. You could also do this with a Cricut Explore Air 3, or even the, the original Cricut Maker or Cricut Maker 3. We will also need some wood. Now listen, y'all. <laughs> I have tried <laughs> so many times to make it work to cut 1 16th inch basswood with the Cricut Explorer. Uh, listen, uh, it just it just was not happening. Let me just show you, let me show you some of the results. All right, so this is just like some random test cuts that I did. Hopefully you can see this on camera. It, it did not even cut through. And that was with the highest pressure setting that I could do. And that was at around like 50 or so passes with the machine. At that point I gave up. Uh, apparently some people can make it work. I was not able to. So let me just say that. Um, so as far as the wood that we'll be using, we will be using the Cricut wood veneer, the stuff right here. This is actually made to work with the Cricut Explorer or Cricut Maker machines. It works wonderfully, but I will also be showing you a little hack or tip or trick to um, actually adhere this down to whatever surface you're wanting to apply it to because y'all it is so freaking cool. I'm so excited for it. We will also need something to actually apply this down to. Um, in most cases anyway. And for me, for what I'm using today, is this really cool little find right here from the Target Bullseye Playground. Y'all, yeah, I love Target, like truly love Target. And even more so, I love the Target Bullseye's Playground. Y'all, it's like the little dollar spot towards the beginning of the store. It's so fun, so cool. Most of the time you can get some really cool stuff for a really good price. And this was no exception. This was only $3 three dollars y'all like i am so here for it. like so freaking obsessed we will also need some type of an adhesive to actually apply our wood cut out down to this little sign right here now this is obviously for today's project it depends on what you're actually using the wood for but for me today i will be using this little sheet of 3m double-sided adhesive right here and i actually learned this hack from john quipoff i believe is how you pronounce his last name but he is such a cool guy. He actually runs like a Glowforge channel here on YouTube. I will link him down in that description box below. So be sure to check out his channel. Really cool stuff. But I'm actually using his little hack that he uses for some of his Glowforge cuts, but I'm bringing it over to the Cricut world. So buckle up your seatbelts because I think this is just so freaking cool. We will also obviously need an SVG cut file to make some of this magic happen. So let's hop over to crafty.net. Y'all know it's the best place to get SVG cut files and sublimation files and Glowforge files and fonts and all the things, right? So here we are on the homepage. I'm gonna come right over here and just type in, let's just type in rabbit. And I am wanting to go something a little bit more on the simple side for this, just because I don't know. I mean, it is kind of going in with that little farmhouse country motif. And I just wanted to be kind of more on the minimalistic side because sometimes less is more, believe it or not. I know that's like a miracle for me to say, y'all know how extra I am, but sometimes less is more. <laughs> but I'm going to be using this little SVG cut file, this little bunny illustration right here, this little bunny silhouette. So I'm just gonna come over here and do a one click download like you know I love to do here on crafty.net. And let's go ahead and hop over here to Cricut Design Space. All right, so here we are on the home screen. Let's come over here and click on upload. And here we are on the upload screen. Let's go ahead and click on upload image. And basically you could just click and drag your files right over here. So what I'm gonna do is open up my little zip file and then just drag our little screen over here with our little download and let me go ahead and grab the little bunny SVG, drag it over here onto the screen and here it is. So let me come down here towards the bottom right, click on upload. And here he is right here under our recently uploaded images. Let me click on that and then click on add to canvas. Boom. All right. So now what we need to do is resize him to fit onto our little sign right here. So let me grab a little measuring tape and let's just see how big we want this to be. All right. So I'm thinking anywhere like around seven and a half inches tall should work. So let's just try that out. So let's come over here and make sure that our little rabbit here is selected. And for the height up here at the top of the screen, Let's do 7.5, hit enter. And for the width, that gives us pretty close to four inches wide. Let's just make sure that that'll work on here. And honestly, y'all, I'm thinking that four inches wide is gonna work perfectly for this. So let's roll with that. So let's go ahead and come up here towards the top right. Click on make it. Now I will be actually cutting out my wood veneer with it face down onto the cutting mat. You don't have to do it this way, 
But if you're actually doing like the same little hack or tip or trick that I'm using with the 3M double-sided adhesive, you definitely want to, to do that. You wanna put your wood face down onto the cutting mat, which we will explain a little bit more here shortly, so stay tuned for that. And so basically if you had a design that you wanted it to be facing in a certain direction, especially if you have words or you know maybe you wanted this rabbit to be facing in a certain direction, however you wanted it to be on the actual design space canvas, then definitely mirror it. So I'm gonna come over here and click on mirror and then come down here to the bottom right and click on continue. All right, so this is the base material cut settings page where we basically tell our machine what we're actually cutting out. So I'm gonna come over here and click on browse all materials and I'll just type in here veneer and then click on natural wood veneer and then done. Now, as far as actually what we're cutting out, how we're cutting it out, all the things, let me go ahead and grab that veneer real quick. And let me also grab our 3M double-sided adhesive here. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and pull down a little bit of this backing sheet, this backing paper that's kind of basically protecting that 3M adhesive. I'm gonna pull that down. I'm gonna line it up here at the top edge of this wood veneer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start peeling this away, all while pushing it on the other side and laying it flat onto the wood veneer. All right, I'm now gonna go ahead and just grab a little squeegee tool and burnish this down really good to that veneer. And you really just wanna go at it, like burnish this down like it owes you money or something, like seriously. <laughs> All right, so here is our wood veneer with our 3M adhesive on the back. Now, here's the thing, y'all. You might be wondering, Michael, what the heck? Like, if we wanted to glue this down, why wouldn't we just use like hot glue or super glue or really any type of adhesive to adhere this down to our little sign right here? And the thing is, you can. But this is like so freaking thin, you all, like seriously so thin that I was honestly worried that you'd be able to see the glue and the adhesive behind the wood veneer. I was afraid it might cause it to kind of crinkle up or soften in some areas and just kind of look all weird. And I, I don't want that. You don't want that either. So that's why I'm going this route right here. Now it is possible. It could look perfectly fine. I just was not willing to chance it. So what I'm doing is just grabbing a little strong grip purple cutting mat like this right here. And y'all, I've tried this both ways. I've tested it out to where I've cut it with the wood side facing up and I've cut it with the actual 3M adhesive side facing up. Trust me when I say it works so much better if you cut it with a 3M side facing up. And again, th this part right here, this is just like a protective coating, essentially. We would definitely have to peel off this little protective barrier to actually expose the other side of that adhesive. So let's go ahead and lay this down onto that cutting mat, just like so. Now I've ran quite a few different tests with this. I have not yet ran into the issue of needing to actually kind of strap this down to the cutting mat with some painter's tape. It just hasn't been necessary in my opinion. Um, if you want that extra level of protection on there, then go for it. I just haven't needed it for this as of yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Cricut Explore Air 2. Again, you can do all this basically the exact same way with your Cricut Explore 3. Now I also wanna point out that these little white star wheels, these little guys right here, I have slid them over to the sides. So I've slid like two down onto one side and then two down onto the other, basically kind of split them apart like so. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and load this. Now I'm gonna come over here to our screen and for the pressure, I'm gonna change that over to more. And one last thing that I do recommend is actually switching out the fine point blade for the deep point blade. Now this does not come with the Cricut Explorer. Um, this is an additional purchase, but I do think that it is necessary for something like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that in. I'm also gonna come back over here because you know our star wheels are you know moved off to the sides, but I also wanna make sure that those star wheels are not pressing up directly onto the part that we're cutting out while we're cutting it out. So I'm gonna come over here, click on edit. I'm just gonna scoot this little rabbit over just a little bit so it doesn't hit those little star wheels while being cut. Then click on done. And now we come over here and click on this little flashing go button. All right, so it is done with the four passes. However, this is so freaking important, y'all. Do not unload it, okay? I know the little, the little low button is flashing. It's yelling at you to unload it. Don't listen to it. What we're gonna do instead is come over here and hit that, that go button. If you're using a Cricut Explore Air 2, then that go button is gonna look like a little Cricut logo. If you're using the Cricut Explore 3, it looks like a play button. Just hit that instead. 
instead of unloading it. And basically it's gonna go back in here and make that exact same cut all over again, which is so important for this since we did add in that 3M adhesive. All right, so now we can unload that. And then I'm gonna flip this over and then peel basically the mat away from our material. And then we can very carefully just kind of pop our little rabbit out like so. And I mean, how freaking perfect does that look? So freaking good. But there is a couple little extra little tips and tricks and hacks I'm gonna show you on how to get this basically uh, applied down perfectly with that 3M adhesive, so be sure to stay tuned. Now, first of all though, I am gonna grab a little bit of rubbing alcohol, just do a really quick wipe down to make sure that that adhesive can properly basically attach and cure to our surface. We just wanna make sure that any gunk, any film, any of that is kind of stripped off of this. All right, so now as far as this little rabbit goes, we need to remove the backing of this 3M adhesive. So, sometimes this 3M adhesive can be a little bit finicky because it is so thin, it's a very thin adhesive. But let me show you a little tip or trick that I have to actually make sure that it comes off as smoothly as possible. All right, so whenever peeling off the backing side of this 3M adhesive, this could especially happen if you didn't burnish it down very well to the wood, but if it's starting to kind of pull and kind of get gooey and weird, and nobody wants that. What you could do is actually hit this with a few seconds of a hair dryer or a heat gun on a very, very low temperature. You do not want to do very much at all. Trust and believe because you could very easily just melt the adhesive and warp the wood veneer. No good, no bueno, we don't roll that way. Now, since I don't have a hair dryer down here, I'm just gonna hit this with a few seconds of heat on my heat gun on a very low temperature. All right, so here is our little wood veneer rabbit with the 3M adhesive on the back. And now we are going to apply this down to our surface, but to make sure that we get it lined up exactly where we wanna go. If you've been around here on this channel for any length of time, y'all know, y'all know what I'm about to pull out. Y'all already know the secret, but for those who are new around here, which by the way, if you are new around here, and you're getting value from this video, be sure to stamp that subscribe button. And also consider ringing that little bell for all the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single crafty minute, especially if you're wanting to learn how to best use your Cricut cutting machine. I'm just saying. So I'm pulling out some parchment paper. Basically, this is such a brilliant and like honestly easy way to get your, your vinyl or really anything with adhesive lined up exactly where you want it to go onto your surface. So I'm just kind of positioning this exactly where I want it. Again, the parchment paper is acting as a barrier between our adhesive and our surface. And right now, my biggest concern is, do I center this rabbit in the middle of the sign or do I have it sitting at the bottom of the sign? Let me know what you would have done in the comment section below. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna have him sitting down at the bottom. So let's just roll with that. I'm going to go ahead and get a little squeegee, burnish down the little top portion with his ears. Then we can lift up on this wood veneer very carefully, because we don't want to crack it. This stuff is thin. And we'll pull out that parchment paper. And then we can burnish it down. Real quick, if you are new around here to this channel and also want to learn how to best use your Cricut cutting machine, or maybe you want to learn more about Glowforge, or maybe about sublimation, then definitely consider stamping that subscribe button and consider ringing that little bell for all the notifications. Y'all do not want to miss out on a single Crafty or Cricut or Glowforge or Sublimation Minute. Trust me, because I am putting out new videos multiple times every single week. Also, if you learned something from this video, be sure to stand that like button. Listen, it takes a couple seconds. It's completely free to do. And I'm just so extremely grateful for everyone who takes the time to do that. So be sure to hit that like button and drop a comment down in the comment section below. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, stay crafty.